a teacher who hated same-sex relationships with such a passion and went out of her way to traumatize a lesbian couple from my class. Studying in an all-girls school, it wasn't rare to hear about lesbian couples here and there. In fact, I remember knowing about lesbians first before ever realizing that there was a male counterpart to this. That there were men who liked men. My earliest memory of my exposure to the concept of lesbians was through an anime called Maria Samaga Miteru. The Virgin Mary is watching. Quite a serious type of Yuri anime. And then through a rumor that I had heard from my sister about her school. She once told me that two girls were caught kissing underneath the school staircase. I don't really remember how I processed it, but I think... I think I labeled it as something taboo. So how did the teachers handle this, right? If these lesbian couples were rampant in the school, surely they would have done something, right? Well, most of them had a very naive lens. The same lens that all the other parents enrolling their kids in this school used. I'm enrolling my daughter in this school to protect her sanctity and to keep her away from evil boys. I shall surround her with girls and nothing but girls. Yeah, so the thought of a girl and a girl being in a relationship was such an impossible thought that they would somehow try to rationalize the closeness as they're just comfortable with each other. Like sisters, girls being girls. Historians will call them best friends. But there were teachers who clearly knew what was going on and they were very understanding. They closed one eye and treated it with a You can do whatever you want, just don't do anything inappropriate on school grounds. Which is the same rule that the straights have in co-ed schools. Just don't bring attention to yourself that would place the teacher in a position where they can no longer turn a blind eye. And that's something that now when I look back, I really appreciate that my teachers did that. One example incident that I like to share with you guys was involving my Christian fellowship teacher. One day, she had some time to sit down with one of her chemistry students and chat before school ended. Some Somehow their conversation turned to relationships. And this student was actually a lesbian going out with another girl. She asked, why do you find women attractive? And the girl answered saying that she felt more comfortable and that she can't see men in a romantic way. They talked further about things and she just bid farewell as the bell rang. So my teacher decided to share this with the Christian Fellowship Committee with a request of including this girl in our prayers. And she left it at that. Now when I look back, I really appreciate the actions of my teacher. Because this teacher could have immediately gone to the discipline teacher, but she didn't. Instead, she decided to pray for the girl and leave it in God's hands. So this was mostly how it was in my school. Some teachers never knew, some teachers knew but turned a blind eye. Which was why I was in for the shock of my life when we did at some point get a homophobic teacher. A teacher who hated same-sex relationships with such a passion and went out of her way to traumatize a lesbian couple from my class. So in my class, there was one lesbian couple, two girls who had public crushes on two seniors, and a lesbian girl who was going out with another girl from another class. And none of my classmates had an issue with them, everyone was very open-minded. A good example to explain our level of acceptance would be to use the Adam Lambert incident. So back then, Adam Lambert won so many people's hearts through American Idol. Everyone was talking about him in school. And when the scandal about him came out, my school went nuts. Everyone was talking about this and everyone was saying, who cares if he's gay? He's still got an amazing voice and he's still hot. Yeah, so that should give you an idea on how open-minded we all were. A lot of our interactions with these girls were also very ordinary, nothing different. We found the couple cute, they had so many cute moments. We'll call them Hui Ting and Mei Yi. In the beginning, I did share before that I had a homophobic face myself. And one of the girls in that relationship, Mei Yi, was actually a close childhood friend of mine. We were very close in primary school. She's the one who introduced me to SHE, the Taiwanese girl group. We sat next to each other, went to each other's houses. Our sisters were in the same class in secondary school. But when we went to secondary school, we kind of drifted apart. Despite being in the same class, I found my group of friends and she found hers. She joined the school band and became close to her girlfriend, Hui Ting. But when I first found out that they were going out, I actually avoided her because I didn't want her gayness to rub on me. I know, I know that was so horrible. In reality, I was just jealous. Jealous that they were able to accept themselves and get together. But once I came to accept myself, I joined the fan club. They were so adorable. But one day, all of these changed. When both Mei and Hui Ting came to school looking upset, there was a weird atmosphere in the class and it was even weirder when both of them sat at different seats. Before this, they sat next to each other, but now Hui Ting was seated at her original place, but Mei Yi was all the way on the other side of the class. The entire morning felt gloomy because Hui Ting had her head on her desk, and we all knew that she was crying. Mei Yi, on the other hand, was looking upset the entire day, and then after recess, my class teacher comes in with the counselling teacher. They're whispering something to each other looking at these two. I had no clue what was going on, but I knew something was up, and this sadly went on for a few months. Once again, we didn't know what exactly was 
was going on, but we caught on that all of our subject teachers had to ensure that these two were separated at all times. I eventually found out through a mutual friend of Mei and I on what actually transpired. Apparently, a teacher had complained to the school about Mei and Hui Ting's relationship. And not just any teacher, but Miss Fei Jin, my maths teacher, a teacher that I actually really looked up to. So this Miss Fei Jin was actually an ex-student. In my school, there were a lot of ex-students studying to become teachers and they would come back to the school for like their internship training kind of thing. I know I'm using the wrong word, but it's kind of similar to an internship. And Miss Fei Jin held a very special place in my heart because at some point in the past, she starred as Christine Daye in our school's Phantom of the Opera musical. So being a 100-year-old convent, my secondary school had a tradition of musicals every five years and in 2008, they were working on the Phantom of the Opera musical. I remember being in primary school when the teacher comes in saying, we've been invited by our secondary school to get a glimpse of the musical. That was their way of promoting to create hype so that the primary students would buy tickets and spread the word and stuff. It was so exciting because I had never been inside the secondary school and I was blown away by the live orchestra, by the costumes, the girl cross-dressing as Raoul, and by Christine Dyer's voice. It was amazing. This was my first time witnessing a live orchestra and seeing ordinary kids being a part of something huge. I remember going home that day and pestering my sister on who that girl playing Christine Dyer was because she was so pretty and her voice was amazing. And then my sister told me the inspiring story of Fei Jin. She was a nobody, no one had even heard of her before, but a teacher accidentally heard her singing one day and pushed her to audition for the role of Christine Dae. And she became famous overnight, all throughout the school. Everyone was talking about her. 12-year-old me was so in awe at her story and her talent. But then in the end, I never got a chance to watch the full musical because the ticket was too expensive for my financially struggling family. But I always kept that short performance I saw at heart. And then when it was time for me to enroll in this secondary school, it was so exciting because Fei Jin was in her last year and I was so happy that I got to attend at least one year of school with someone I admired. My school had a very strong senior and junior culture, so there were many 13-year-olds who would pick their favorite senior to admire and that means waiting outside their class just to say hi, supporting them in sports events and stuff, buying them snacks out of admiration. Fei Jin was one of those seniors. Of course, she wasn't at like the top level. Nah, that was Shang Geet. Who, who, Shang Geet. Geet stole all the girls' hearts, especially after cutting her hair. But then I was that small minority who admired Fei Jin. I didn't do the extreme stuff like waiting outside her classroom, I just admired her from a distance. To me, it was like being in the midst of a celebrity. So that's why I was very happy that my class got her as our math teacher. But then I never knew the amount of hatred she carried in regards to the LGBTQ plus community. And I don't think Mei Yi and Hui Ting even did anything inappropriate on school grounds. I think it was their Facebook pictures that Miss Fei Jin came across and then all of our supporting comments gave away that these two were going out and so she actively went out of her way with the purpose to separate them. She got their parents involved, the principal, the discipline teacher, the counseling teachers, even a few prefects got involved and it must have been very stressful and embarrassing for these two girls. All of our subject teachers were briefed to ensure that they were not seated next to each other and they were forbidden from hanging out with each other in school and outside. A classmate who was a prefect was also appointed to make sure that these two were not seen together in school so the mental toll that it took on them must have been huge and it was then that I understood why the atmosphere had been so gloomy, why Hui Ting was crying in class every single day. But remember the prefect that was appointed? She was a good person, okay, God bless her soul. She together with that mutual friend of ours, who was actually our class monitor, tried their best to secretly allow these two to be together. Miss Fei Jin went on to target other lesbian couples in our school, but since they were in different forms and classes, I never saw if things got as bad as this couple. Because remember the other lesbians in my class? Yeah, they didn't get into any trouble, and I think it's because their crushes or partners were in different classes. Classes. And I will say that Hui Ting and Mei's relationship was like the cutest one that got a lot of attention. Eventually, Miss Fei Jin finished her internship training stuff and left. I think I remember the restrictions loosening up after that. And somehow Hui Ting and Mei started hanging out again, like publicly. And that was it. And I was never able to look at Fei Jin, Miss Fei Jin through the lenses that I used to look at her with. What's even messed up is that Fei Jin was a born-again Christian, so she always used religion to justify her actions. But it was very shocking for me to see this soft-spoken role model of mine harboring that much hatred, going out of her way to ruin the lives of two people that had nothing to do with her. I saw two Christian teachers dealing with this matter in two different ways. The first one with love, kindness, and understanding, and then the other one with just pure hatred. I don't know what Mei Yi is doing now, but I know that Hui Ting is an air stewardess. Yeah. I also have no idea what my school is like now, because my 
time was when the LGBTQ plus community was newly starting to gain traction. Not many people even knew about the acronym or even about trans or bisexual people. But in this current climate, I have no idea if any extremist views and methods have successfully seeped into the school system, making the queer kids feel even more unsafe. Or it could be the other way around, right?